Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Okay, so this is probably going to be the last uh, knife sharpening video I'm going to do while I've got the, the, the TV and the microscope and everything out. We'll get through with this part right here and then we'll get into some straight razor sharpening. Or everybody calls it honing when you're, when you're sharpening a straight razor. Um, so we'll get into some straight razor honing um, this evening maybe a little bit tomorrow. Uh, I don't know, it's deer season and my boy hadn't gotten his deer yet. The wind's supposed to be really rough tomorrow, but we'll just have to kind of see, you know, play it by ear. We might go hunting in the morning, might shoot some more YouTube videos. So anyway, so I've shown you over the last four or five videos, I've kind of lost track, I've been shooting videos all day. Um, over the last couple of videos, I've shown you um, what an edge looks like uh, when it's dull, what an edge looks like when it's sharp. Um, we've shown the, the magic marker trick to, to give you an idea of you know what you're doing when you contact the, the edge on the stone, where you're contacting, um, how much more work you have to do, uh, how close you are, all that kind of stuff. Showed you the burr, got some awesome uh, images, uh, or footage, whatever you want to call it, of the burr. I mean, stuff that uh, that I never dreamed that this setup would be able to show uh, just picked it up amazing, and I'm super stoked about that. Um, and then I think the last video we did, um, we took a, a Victor Knox Tinker, took the large blade, and then took it. Uh, it was sharp. I showed showed you what uh, the edge looked like. Well, semi sharp. Um, it's seen a little bit of use and then we dulled the crap out of it on the stone showed you what the dulled edge looked like and then we reshaped the edge refined the edge and then um, you know we shaped it brought up a burr moved the burr to the other side weakened the burr and sheared the burr off resulting in a sharp edge I took some hair off my arm you know so you could see how sharp it was all that kind of stuff and there was something in that one that um, I was really amazed that I got to see and so I'll have to play with that idea a little bit in my head before uh, before I show you something else but I think it's going to be a pretty exciting uh, technique on sharpening straight razors or honing straight razors uh, but I gotta get it straight in my head first before I can you know put it all out here so you can see it anyway so this video is taking your sharp sharpening to the next level okay this is custom knife sharpening, all right? And this is something that you can do at home and that more than likely you will do at home as soon as you get the basics down. All right, so what we've got here is my case. I picked this one up a couple of years ago. Well, maybe more than a couple, maybe about oh, 10 or 15 years ago or so. A case uh, two-bladed trapper. Um, it's got your, your normal that blade and then it's got um, that blade right there absolutely gorgeous knife really good action um, you know the scales look really nice I think that's the amber jig bone uh, neatly pin peened pins um, nice front and rear bolsters I mean just a gorgeous knife well I picked this knife up for uh, whittling whittling wood carving um, my last job I was a uh, uh, um, plan operator, uh, chemical plan operator, and is that the side I wanted to show you? Oh, that's the spine. No wonder it looked funny. I was a chem chemical plan operator, and um, that job is uh, is 99% boredom, 1% uh, excitement. That's not the section of the edge that I was. Well, maybe it is. Oh, we can show it to you anyway. 99% boredom and 1% pure excitement. So, you know, when uh, you're doing your job well and you're uh, getting your rounds and everything, what that plant uh, made was um, uh, urea used as a uh, cattle feed, fertilizer, um, that sort of stuff. You take um, uh, ammonia, some water, CO2, um, and you pretty much you mix it all together and you pump it into a reactor at very high temperature or not very high temperature I think it was running the reactor was running about 375 Fahrenheit something like that but fairly high pressure about 3000 psi 
you cook it in that reactor for a little bit and then um, chemical reaction takes place and then what you get out the other end is a very weak form of urea and then you basically distill it um, kind of like you do with uh, with a barrel of oil you know um, different uh, products have got different flash points or boiling points and so you refine it all the way down until you get the the end product that you want so anyway so that job um, very boring most of the time when everything's running good pretty much your job is to make sure that everything stays running really good you know um, get your readings check out the pumps listen for uh, for uh, imminent pump failures you know bearings that are going out things like that the rest of the time you pretty much just sit and wait for something bad to happen and then you go fix it and then you go back sit and wait for something bad to happen so I did quite a bit of whittling while I was out there, um, you know, like a ball in a cage, chains, you know, stuff like that. And I picked this knife up to do that sort of th uh, stuff. So anyway, so this major, the, the major blade right here, the um, clip point one, I used that for like uh, rough shaping. Um, and so when the edge came from the factory, you know, it had your you know this right here is your blade bevels and your blade finish this is your edge bevels and whatever finish that you had on this more than likely this is a uh, that looks pretty close to be a 325 grit diamond edge um, but I, I what I want you to see <coughs> excuse me is this part right here okay so once you get fairly good at sharpening and you get comfortable using your your stones and you know putting a basic edge on at whatever angle it is that was already there because you can feel that flat of the edge bevels on the stone your next step is to start squeezing a little bit more performance out of that knife okay so this knife right here is, you know, I don't scrape gaskets with this knife. I don't cut wire with it. I don't, um, uh, oh, you know, cut dirty rope, anything like that. All this, all this knife ever did was just whittle, all right? So if you have a knife that's kind of dedicated to a task, you can start playing around with the, the edge geometry to give you more performance and more ease of use in that particular task. Okay, so here I was cutting wood. Most of the time it was clean wood, you know, taking branches, stripping the bark off, um, kind of getting the, the rough outline of the knife before I started detail, or the knife, rough outline of the carving before I started detail carving it. Okay, so we all know that if this is your edge, the thicker the edge, the more resistant to abuse that edge is going to be. But the harder time it's going to have penetrating whatever it is that you're carving or carving or cutting or whatever. So if you can thin that edge back, the thinner you can get it and still maintain edge stability in your normal day-to-day -day tasks, the less pressure, the less force you're going to have to use to get that edge to go through the material that's being cut. Okay, hope that's as clear as mud. Now, you do have um, some limitations there. Okay, so generally speaking, the softer the steel, the more obtuse your edge angle is going to have to be to be able to support that edge. The harder and the finer grain structure that you have in that steel, the narrower you can uh, run your edge. So let's say on any given task, so like this one, okay, so let's say I'm uh, just debarking and, um, you know, kind of rough shaping, you know, small branches and stuff to whittle. This stainless steel that's in this knife blade, now granted these are factory knives, okay, so this isn't the, the same knife, all right, but it'll give you a, kind of an indication, okay, so this knife right here, stainless steel, it's a Victor Knox, okay, this blade is just as hard here up by the nail nick as it is by the edge as it is by the tang, in the tang. They do that because factories, honestly, I don't believe that they can afford to put the time, because this knife sells for $20, okay? You get two blades, a couple of extra, you know, two screwdriver types, can opener, bottle opener. That's an awful dang lot of knife to expect for $20. 
Now, for them to come back in and soften the tangs and the spines a little bit, you know, that would make that knife sell for another $20 more, you know, maybe. Just depends on how they run their process. So the steel in these, these factory, custom or factory pocket knives is going to be a little bit softer so that it maintains good strength in the tang and the spine and you give up some, some performance in your edge because they've got to run it a little bit softer. Okay, but there's a beautiful thing about knives. You and your knife and your stone, once you get used to sharpening and everything, will all kind of come together in your normal tasks for that knife and tell you what the ideal edge angle is for that knife. How that works, you take your knife and you can see, we'll pull this, well no, we'll, we'll just kind of back it out a little bit. Okay, and we're going to see how wide these edging, or this edge bevel is. Okay, oh and you know what, we're going to try to put another one right next to it and see, see the difference. Okay, so that's, that's fairly clear right there. Alright, so now let's take the factory edge on this Victorinox. And we'll put it right next to the other one. Okay, so granted both of these knives are uh, a little bit, you know, they're not the same height on the table. But what we're looking at here is see how narrow this edge bevel is? And see how wide this edge bevel is? What you do is to start off with Take, if you, if you want to play around with your edge geometry some, take that knife and sharpen it at the lowest edge angle that you think that you can get away with. Okay, so you lay your blade flat on the stone. So let's take this one right here. Uh, we're going to go like this. Okay, so flat on the stone, right? Now, if your normal sharpening angle was something like that, Bring it down some. Bring it down another five degrees. Bring it down to where it's actually scratching the finish of the blade. Okay? Get it as low as you possibly can. Go through, set your edge at that edge angle. Sharpen it up. Now go out and use the thing. Okay? Use it for its normal intended tasks. Okay? So see how wide this one is? If I did the same thing to this one, it would be, and I've already done this with, with uh, the Victor and Ox that I carry every day. Might get kind of crowded on this table here. Uh, let's pull that one off and put this one up. Okay, you see how much wider of a... I got a glint. There we go. See how much wider that uh, edge bevel is on the one that I'm carrying versus the factory one? Okay. So now let's go back to this one because it's got a... Um, you can really see what it is that I'm wanting to show you in that one. Okay, lay that edge back. Lay it back and go as thin as you dare. Okay. Now you go out and you use that knife and you note how it fails. All right? So if it go more than likely it will dull quite a bit faster. But boy, the cutting performance until it dulls is going to be really really nice. Okay? That edge being real nice and thin is going to penetrate your normal work, you know, with much less force, much less resistance and be a much more efficient cutter. Okay? Until it dulls. Once it dulls, there's no reason you'll say, okay, well, it failed, um, you know, this quickly versus as quick as I would like it. So then what you do is you come back in with your stone the next time you go to sharpen it. And if you sharpened, there's flat. So if you sharpened it just, just barely like that, raise it up two or three degrees and then sharpen it again. You'll find it'll go much quicker because now you're not having to remove all the metal on the shoulder here. You're just creating a micro bevel. 
All right. Now take that edge out, use it for the same tasks, and note how much stronger it is. Now, if it's way too strong, it never gets damaged, then you can come back in and change your angle and lean it out just a little bit. All right, but that way, over the use of, say, a week of doing that, your hand will learn what angle that particular knife wants for those type of, of daily chores or whatever tasks it is you put that knife to. Now you can see on this one that that's what I did. So here's your blade finish and your, your blade bevels, transition zone, edge bevels, and then see how this part of the light reflects different? It's reflecting in here because the light is so, so bright. Um, right in here, it's reflecting quite a bit differently. But up in here, you can see there's a shadow right there where this part of the edge is sharpened at a steeper angle than this part of the edge. Okay? Now, as you work with that and as you sharpen it back, eventually... You know, because as you sharpen, you're removing material. So this edge is going to keep moving back farther and farther and farther, just like a number two pencil gets sharpened and used. Uh, of course, I cut the point off of that one. Here's one. So number two pencil, you know, they start off that long. You sharpen them, you use them, you sharpen them, you use them, you sharpen them, you use them, until the pencil is worn away to nothing. Same thing happens on your knife blade. But you don't have to keep that same angle all the time on the other hand if you're doing a rough use type of knife um you know say a, a pretty much a sharpened pry bar here i'll grab this is one of my old favorites and this knife has been on youtube plenty before this knife was actually oh i'd say at least a quarter inch wider when i first built it and this knife gets used for everything. I mean, um, you know, it's pried open, painted sh uh, sh shut windows. Um, uh, you know, I've used it as a, a sharpened chisel, um, a sharpened pry bar, I've cut miles and miles of insulation with this stuff, um, dug in the dirt, uh, chipped through a foot of ice to get to a frozen water shutoff valve. I mean, it's, it's been through the ringer. And so every time it gets used, um, well, in the in the beginning, every time it got used, I kept thickening or you know uh, steepening up the edge angle until it would hold a fairly decent edge, you know, for a, a reasonable amount of time. A reasonable amount of time might be you know 15 minutes, depending upon the job. Um, <coughs> Whether I was cutting insulation or, um, well, I guess the, the camera died, so we might as well bring you back here. Whether I was cutting insulation or um, stripping wire, uh, you know, kind of whatever my weekly, um, weekly work was when I was carrying that blade. So, you know, once you get the basics of sharpening down, don't be afraid to kind of play with your, your edge angles a little bit. Go ahead, if an edge seems like it's just mighty, mighty thick, don't be afraid to lay that edge back. You know, um, a, a very, very shallow sharpening angle to remove that, that uh, the, sh the edge transition zone where it transitions from the edge or the blade bevels to the edge bevels. Move that back a ways, okay? Lean it out to where you know you're going to get damage on it the first time you use it. And then start slowly, you know, a couple of degrees at a time, steepening that edge angle out until, you know, you get an edge that's a perfect balance of ease of use and efficiency and still maintains uh, enough edge durability, you know, to, to maintain an edge for a good or an acceptable amount of time. Anyway, I hope that was clear as mud. Um, but once you start sharpening, uh, you know, it'll come to you. You'll think, wait a minute, that's what Joe was talking about, you know, six months ago when, when I watched his YouTube video. Anyway, 
This is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please grab a stone, grab an old junk knife, start practicing. The second you start practicing, the second you feel a burr, and it all kind of comes together for you, which I bet will happen within 30 minutes to an hour of your first sharpening session, you'll be hooked. From then on, you'll experience the freedom that comes with sharpening your own blades, and you will never, ever have to use a dull knife if you don't want to again. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck on your sharpening, and we will see you next time.